Well, gang, good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. It is great to have you here. If this is your very first time with us, let me introduce myself. I'm, I'm Pastor Joe Gwines of the Redeemer's Place. We're a brand new church starting up here in southwest Broward County. And, you know, we just exist to do one thing. We want to joyfully and passionately glorify God as we are proclaiming the supremacy of Jesus and we're edifying you. We simply want to be your church, your friends, your family. And listen, if, if you don't have a church, come join us. We'd love to have you. It'd be our privilege, as a matter of fact, to have you come and join us. We're doing everything online, but I hope in the next few weeks we'll be able to come back together as a church body and, and meet face to face. And you'll see that on our Facebook page, on our website, on our YouTube channel. But if you could, look for that. But whatever way you decide to join us, we're thankful that you're here. Listen, tonight we're going to look at a section of Scripture that's, that's really, really um, unique. It's interesting. We're actually going to look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. It's where Peter talks about our role with our civil authorities. And if you have been with us back in June 28th, we're, you're going to recall that I did a, a sermon on Romans 13 verses 1 through 7 where it talks just about the, the exact same thing. So if you listen to that sermon and you listen to this Bible study tonight, you're probably going to hear much the same thing. But that's a good thing because that means God's Word is consistent. So why don't you, why don't we do this? Why don't we turn and, and pray and then we're going to jump right into to what our study has for us tonight. So let's pray. Lord, we, we are thankful for uh, the time to come and to, to worship you through the study of your word. We know that so many people in our world don't have this privilege. And so, Lord, tonight we, we give this all to you. We ask that you're glorified and that we're edified because of what we have done here tonight together. And we give this all up in your praise and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as I said, tonight we're going to turn to, to, to God's Word about the church's submission to civil authorities as a way of standing firm when, when all the craziness is breaking loose in life. When, when everything is going crazy, you remember that, that Peter is all about teaching us how to stand firm in the face of trials and difficulties. In fact, he expects that from the church. And he's going to lay out six different commands tonight, or principles, if you will, for how we can stand firm as it relates to our submission to civil authorities. And we're going to see three critical lessons in verses 13 and 14. First, we're going to see the command to submit. Then we're going to see the motive for our submission. And then we're going to talk about what the extent of our submission is to be. But then picking up in verse 15, we're going to see what he has to say about the reason for our submission. And then verse 16, he's going to talk about our attitude of submission. And then finally in verse 17, uh, Peter is going to talk about the application of our submission to the civil authorities that we are under. So this lesson, I think, is critical for us given the day and time in which we're in. And, and again, I would urge you, Go back and look at our June uh, 28th uh, sermon on Sunday where we talked about Romans 13 verses 1 through 7 because it gives us almost the same lesson. I think if you look at that sermon and you listen to the Bible study uh, tonight, you'll have a, a kind of a full view of what God's Word has to say about our submission to civil authorities. So tonight, let's, let's begin by reading 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 13 through 17 and listen to what Peter says. He says, Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Amen. What a great lesson for us tonight. Now, 
I want you to notice and, and look first at, at verse 13. And I, I want you to notice the command to submit. You know, Peter starts with this phrase. He says, be subject. It's a really, really interesting um, word that he uses. I want you to notice first that, that he doesn't allow for exceptions. He doesn't allow for exemptions. In other words, everybody in the church is to be subject to the civil authorities that are over us. I think that goes beyond just the church. Everyone is to be subject to the civil authorities that we find ourselves under. Now, this, this phrase, be subject, however, has a much deeper meaning. It literally means to arrange in formation under a commander. In other words, it's a, it's a military phrase. And so what, what Peter is telling us is that, listen, uh, the civil authorities over us are, are kind of like our military commander. We are to arrange ourselves under their direction. Now, that terminology, if you recall, back on Romans 13, verses 1 through 7, it's very, very similar terminology that Peter uses, that, that Paul used back in Romans. And I want you to remember, one of the things that we talked about when we talked in, about Romans 13 is that our submission to our civil authorities is um, to be done as long as our government does not infringe upon what God's Word has to say about what is right and wrong. And, and you'll also remember that we saw that government authorities, they are ordained by God. And to rebel against them for any other reason than, than them pulling back from the Word of God and applying its principles in, in the area in which they govern, uh, that's, that's a reason for sin. And so we've got to be very, very, very careful in that area. Now, Paul and, and both Peter, I want you to remember this too, that they both lived under Roman rule. Uh, and Roman rule in that day, it certainly was not favorable to Christianity. You know, in fact, it was antagonistic towards Christianity because Christians would not bow the knee to the emperor uh, of Rome. And, and so you, you look at this phraseology of be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution. And you have to remember that these guys were living in a time which was very, very difficult. And so there's a lot of lessons here to take away from what we see uh, Peter having to say. Remember that Jesus said this in Matthew 22, verse 21, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. So as we think about our submission and being subject to, uh, let's render things to Caesar that are Caesar's, but let's remember that Caesar is not the ultimate authority in our life. Now, um, something else that we should remember is that the only exception to the rule of submission, it, again, is when the government com commands something that God forbids and, or it's something that he would say we are not to do. And so we have to be very, very careful about that. In my sermon on Romans 13, I gave the example of the midwives before Pharaoh or Daniel, or Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All of those examples reveal circumstances that allowed people to, to not submit to the authority of the government when it overstepped its bounds. Now, the next thing I, I want us to look at in verse 13 is, is really the motive for our submission. Notice how Peter says it. He says it very simply. He says, for the Lord's sake. For the Lord's sake. So we are to be subject to, to those civil institutions for the Lord's sake. So the issue here is not our submission necessarily to mankind. It's submission to God because the civil authorities are, are, are ordained by God. And to rebel against the civil authorities for no just reason is really to, uh, to rebel against God. And so we have to remember that as we're thinking about this reason for submitting to our authorities. Now, our submission to our civil authorities is to model Christ's submission to the church. And, you know, that reason is really kind of fleshed out in verse 23 when, when Peter says, When he was reviled, 
he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges rightly. So, you see, in, in the midst of all of this, our submission to the authorities is for the Lord's sake because we are glorifying the Lord because they have been instituted by the Lord for our benefit. Now, it's, rem it's good to remember that that Christ lived under both Roman and Jewish rule. It, you, we seem to forget that sometimes, but, but the reality is, is that he lived under both. And, you know, as you read the New Testament and you see him engaging his, his authorities that were over him, we almost never see him engaging the Roman authorities. O almost never. He engaged the Jewish authorities a lot. Uh, because they were doing things that were contrary to God's word. But, but he almost never engaged the Roman authorities. And, and you know, I asked my, myself, why is that? And I think the reason is, is because his focus was on his kingdom, not on the earthly kingdom. In fact, in John 18, verse 36, Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this world. And you'll recall that from our study of the book of John. So, so again, you know, we have to look at our motive for submission because we are trying to honor the Lord as we submit to those that are over us in the civil realm. Now, look at verses 13 and 14, and we're going to take the next step in what Peter has to say to us about the scope of our submission. And it includes, it says, every human institution. Now, that's, an inter that's, that's broad. That's very, very big. You know, the word institution in the New Testament is always in connection to God's creative activities. It includes all human institutions, for example. Government authorities, as we've talked about in Romans 13. It, it, it's really about work and employers, so employees and employers. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18, Ephesians 6, verses 5. Colossians 3.22 all talk about that issue. But also the family is another institution ordained by God. The church is another institution ordained by God. So you, you see all these institutions that God has ordained. And Peter is saying that we are to submit ourselves to them. Now notice the scope of the submission. It includes all levels of of authority, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to the governors. Wow, that's huge. The scope is big. The emperor is obviously the one who had ultimate authority, and the governors were those who had lower authorities within the kingdom. So what Peter is saying is that our scope expands every government authority that we have over us. And the reason is simple. He gives us a very simple reason. He says, to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. You see, our submission to the government is because their role is to protect us. They are to, to punish those to, evil, to do evil, and they are to praise those who do good. So the role of government, and we saw this in Romans 13, is to be God's avenger of evil. It is also to be the institution that bars back evil in the world. It's to, to restrain evil in the world. And, and so what Peter is just echoing what Paul said back over in Romans 13. Now, in verse 15, he's he now going to talk about the reason for our submission. And the reason is simple. It's really simple. By doing good, you shall put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. You see, our submission to the government is a good thing. And Peter says that when we submit to the government, like we submit to Christ, when we are helpful, when we are good, when we are doing all the right things, we put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Now, there are three words here that are really, really important. The word silence means to literally to restrain or, or to muzzle or to mark speechless. And, and ignorance is, is not just uh, an ignorance not, that's based upon just willy-nilly, whatever we, we don't want to pay attention to. It's literally a definition of a willful, 
hostile rejection of the truth. So it's deeper than just bland ignorance. It, it's, it's the person that is willful and they're hostile in their rejection of the truth. And foolish literally means senseless and without reason, a lack of mental sanity. So you see, what we're doing by submitting to the authorities is that we're silencing all this foolishness that's going on in the world. All this insanity that's happening, all this stuff that's going on without reason. We, we are silencing those who are willful and they're hostile to the truth because our good acts prove the truth. And so what Peter is calling us to do is to model Jesus in light of the authorities. Now Titus 3 verses 1 through 3 says this, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy towards all people. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hatred by others, and hating one another." Man, oh man, could we use that text right today, given what's going on in our world? So here's the bottom line. That, that good, decent, moral, upright people are a powerful force against the foolishness and the stupidity of mankind. And Peter calls us to live that way. That we need to be good, decent, moral people so that we push back against the evil in the world. But now let's move on to verse 16. And, and notice that, that Peter's going to talk to us about the attitude of submission. He says this phrase, he says, we are to live as people who are free. If there was ever a 4th of July message, that's it. Live as people who are free. And, and you think about that terminology and you realize that, you know, we're free from a lot of things. We're, we're free from sin's condemnation. We're free from sin's penalty. We're free from Satan's bondage. We're free from the world's control. We're free from death's power. You see, so in light of, of all of those things, we are to live as free people. We, we are unshackled. We have full access to God. We are no longer controlled by Satan. We are no longer controlled by our sinful nature. But because we are free, we are not to use our freedom against the rulers and the civil authorities of our lives. Listen to what he says. Not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Did you hear that? Living as servants of God. So once again... He's telling us, listen, you've got to live as a servant of God. You've got to live a good, moral, decent life in front of the civil authorities. Now, this phrase, cover up, is an interesting phrase. It literally means a mask or a veil. And evil here is, is literally means a baseless um, sense that arrives from vengeance and bitterness and hostility and disobedience. So what is he saying? is that you and I, let's not use our freedom that we have to, to live evil, to, to be baseless, to, to mask away all of the things that we, we shouldn't be doing. Let's, let's, let's refrain from all of that. So again, what Peter is doing is he's calling us to submission and to remember that our submission is driven by our willingness to be a servant of God. Wow, what, what a lesson. Our world needs to hear that right now. And the church needs to exhibit that right now because a lot of what's going on today is, is contrary to everything that Peter is saying and for that matter that Paul is saying. Now, in verse 17, he talks about the application of submission. And I, I notice, notice that there are four groups that, that he says should be honored by our conduct. First, he says all people, both Christian and non-Christian alike. 
regardless of their station of life. You know, everybody in government is not a Christian. I, I, hope, I hope you know that, but we are to honor all people. Then he says, love the brotherhood. So you and I are to love our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We are to literally have this selfless, sacrificial love. That's the terminology that he uses for love here. That agape love. That we are to give it all for our brothers and sisters. Then he says, fear God. Now, not to be afraid of him, obviously, but it literally means to show reverence and submission to God, regardless of our circumstances in life. And then he says, we need to honor the emperor. Honor the emperor. We should honor the king. Romans 13 verse 7 talks about that. And I want you to notice the tie back to verse 13. So this is a nice encapsulated message. So, you know, I was thinking about this um, today as, as I was getting ready to do uh, this tape. And, and I thought about what's going on today. And, you know, listen. Um, Republicans, when, when President Obama was here, we should have been honoring him. And the Democrats, when President Trump is here, we should be honoring him. And, and whoever is the next president in the upcoming election, we as a church are to honor him. And I think that's a lesson that we need to learn as a people very, very quickly. Now, as I always do, I include three questions for, for your discussion. And and I want to step back and, and try to, to look at these, and I want us to, to see how we can apply this to our lives, because I think this is so important given the day in which we're in. And here's the first question. The term be subject, it literally means to arrange in formation under a commander. And here's the question. How are you doing that in your life as you think over those authorities who are over you? Where are you doing well? Why is that? Why are you doing well in certain areas? In certain areas, why are you struggling? Why is that the case? And what are you going to do about it? You know, one of the areas that I struggle with in my life is my homeowners association. They tell me when to, to cut my grass and trim my bushes and mulch my flower beds. I really don't like it, but I've chosen to live there, so I have to live by their authority. So, so where are the areas that you may be struggling with in this whole arena? And here's the second question. Peter tells us to be subject to all authority for the Lord's sake. Why does this help us to, to stand firm? Why does this, this whole intent of keeping our eyes on Jesus as we submit to the civil authorities uh, in our lives, why does that help us stand firm? Why does that help us submit to them? Well, what are the benefits of that? How does that get us over the rough parts of our submission to the civil authorities in our life? And then finally, why is it important to remember that our freedom does not give us the right to rebel against authority? What are the benefits you can think of that comes from remembering this simple but profound principle? Why can we not use our freedom to just do whatever we want in life? It's so critical. People think that they can do that all the time. But why is that a safeguard against doing things that are wrong, that get us in trouble eventually? So, gang, thank you for the time tonight. I, I hope you've enjoyed the study. And again, I would encourage you, go back and look at that sermon on Romans 13. You'll get a full view of, of what it means to submit to our th civil authorities. And again, I would be remiss if I didn't invite you to Sunday. I would love to see you online with us on Sunday. It's going to be a great time as we continue to look at the topic of joy. And, you know, we're going to try to come back together very, very soon. We're working really hard on that. I know this is a frustration point for a lot of you, but, but we have to follow those in, that we are under. And so we're going to try to do that as best we can. All righty? So listen, have a great week. Matter of fact, I hope that between now and Sunday, these are the best few days you've had all summer, and I hope to see you soon. God bless and good night.